Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm here to demonstrate this new custom node that I created. And what it does is it will basically take in four primary currencies that your game can have and one um, premium currency. So this is good for any game where you're going to be having upgrades or unlockable equipment. So pretty much 99.9% .9 of games out there. And what it does is it will take in whatever your resources are and it will calculate whether or not, based on your purchase cost here, this is a custom struct that will also be created, if your player can actually do the upgrade or make the purchase. So just for testing, I have given the player over here a thousand of each resource. You will see that. And I've given them 10 units of this premium currency. And then in here for purchase cost, I have set um, certain values. So the gold is more than what we have. The silver is more than what we have. The copper and platinum we can cover. And the exchange rate here, this 100, this determines how much each premium unit gives you of one of, of the other resources. So if it's set at 100, one unit of the premium currency, so in this case gems, will cover for 100 um, of any of the other resources. OK. And after that, we have a branch. So this will tell you if the purchase was successful or not. And then we're going to loop through. I've put all the player's resources into an array. So we'll be able to see how much they have afterwards, whether they purchase something or if they didn't purchase something. So if we hit play, you guys can see here that it first started out. And it says purchased. And the second one says not enough funds. So. If I minimize this here, and we look at our purchase struct, we can do the math very simply. We start out with 1,000 of gold, and the purchase cost was 1550, which means we were short 550. So we had to use six units of the premium currency. Um, the premium currency always rounds up. So that's why the 550, it's going to take six units to get to 600. And then the player's resource for gold is now at zero. For silver, we also started with 1,000. We were short by 250, so that would cost three premium units. So total, in the first two, we've used nine premium units. For the copper, we started at, five, at 1,000. It costs 500. We're left with 500. For the platinum, started at 1,000. It costs 250. We're left with 750. And this one here, we have one premium unit left. We started with 10. We use six to cover for the gold and three to cover for the silver. So that's why we're left with one. And it says that we were able to purchase our item or upgrade. Then after we wait five seconds, it tries to run through again. So basically make another purchase with the same cost. And now you'll see um, it hasn't changed any of the player's um, values. It's still 00, 0, 500, 750, and 1. And then it says not enough funds. So this prevents being charged um, if it got through to the end and say, you know, the very last one, you just didn't have enough platinum. It wouldn't charge you for the other three if you had sufficient funds. All right. So let me show you guys how you can create this in your own games. So we're going to open up a different project. And what we're going to do is right click here in the content browser. And we're going to go to New C++ Class. And we will scroll down until we hit Blueprint Function Library. We will hit Next. And we will call this Resource Bank. And if you guys name it this, it'll save you some copy and paste later. So I'll hit Create Class. And then we're going to wait for Visual Studio to compile. OK, and now that that's, com that's uh, finished compiling, we're going to start in our header file here. That's the resource bank.h. Get rid of these two. And what we're going to do is copy this line here, Control x And we're going to paste it up here. We're going to move it out of the way. And then what I want you guys to do is take everything from the first line here all the way down to this last curly brace. 
with the semicolon right above the line here. We'll hit Control C. And we will go back into Visual Studio. And we'll just hit Control V. And then we're going to need to take this part here. Control X. And we're going to need to replace this line right here under U class. So now under U class, it should say class, the name of your project, API, and then U resource bank, or whatever you named um, your blueprint function. Then we're going to go into the C file, that's resource bank.cpp, and we're going to take everything from below the yellow line all the way down, control C, and we can just paste that right in. And we don't have to do anything if you named it resource bank. If you didn't, you will have to change this include to be whatever the name of your uh, blueprint function is, and you will need to change all of these. Actually, I think there's only one. So just this one right here to be you and then whatever the name of your function was. And finally, one last thing I want to let you guys know is that right here where you see display name, gold, silver, copper, platinum, exchange rate, and then within the function itself, it also has the same thing, gold, silver, copper, platinum, and then gems. It's what I call the premium currency. You can go ahead and rename those to anything that you guys want, whatever the resource is in your game. You can just double click here, and for example, we'll call this Fool's Gold, just so you guys can see that it will change these names. Fool's Gold. You can also, this is the struct right here. And you see I have four resources, one, two, three, four, and the currency exchange. You guys can easily um, copy this line like this and add in another one and just call it resource five, for example, and then change the name to resource five. And it will add in an extra resource. You would also have to... Um, copy these lines here. Basically follow the same format. Let me see if I can get one up to here. And you would just have to copy that and add in another one and then change it to resource 5. So if you guys have more or less resources, just let me know if you need some help trying to figure out how to do that. All right, so we will just hit build now and we will wait for this solution to build. Okay, now that it's done building, you should see down here it says build once succeeded. If something failed, um, just go back and try and copy paste again. You might have missed something there or accidentally deleted a curly brace or a semicolon. Or if you um, named your project something other than resource bank, be sure that um, the names are all matching here and here and this line down here all has the same name that you used. All right, so if we minimize all of this, we come in here, we'll be able to go into our third person character. We'll grab this. And we will search for spend resources. And you see it comes up here under Purchases and Upgrades. And as you can see here, this now says Fool's Gold. And the rest of them are the same as what the defaults were. And Purchase Cost, this is the new struct that we've created. Um, an easy way to get this, just right click and promote to variable. And we'll call it Purchase Cost. We'll hit Compile so we can set these values. And don't worry about that. And you'll see here, Fool's Gold, we'll just say this is 1575. Silver, we'll call 
1200. Copper will make 900. Platinum will make 1000. And we'll have our exchange rate at 100 again. And then we need to make variables for all of these. You guys don't need to watch me. OK, now that I've finished making a variable for each one of these, we can give the player some default values. I'll just give them a 1,000 of everything. You guys can give them whatever you want and play around with the numbers. And for the gems, we'll give them 10. And then we'll make a branch node. And I'm basically going to have the same setup that I had before. So we'll just put these into an array. And we'll have a for each loop off of the true and off of the false off of this we'll say purchased and off of this one we'll say not enough funds and what we want it to do is take the array element and we'll just print it out. So you can see at first when we start, we're going to call this, we're going to attempt to make this purchase. After this is complete, we will delay a few seconds, say three, and we'll attempt to make the same purchase Hit compile and save. Now if we hit play, see the first one made the purchase and the second one did not. And of course if you guys go through, I'm sure you'll see that all the numbers add up. Alright, I hope you thought that was helpful and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. Alright, see you guys later.